previously on Chop Cut Rebuild. Today we were working on the uh, SEMA van, trying to get the, all the interior panels cut out and fit. The panels in the van are being made out of a quarter inch Luan with a uh, uh, wood backing on it for support. Hard work builds a place to rest a creative mind. The design in the van uh, is basically coming from my imagination, you might say. Uh, there's no plans for it, there's no idea. We have no rough idea what's going on. We're just kind of playing it by ear and, and winging it, you might say. Oh, yes, sir. We've got boxes in the back. Lots of boxes. Lots of boxes. Do we see them? Absolutely. Let's go. My name's Jim Beebe. I own Red Rock off and Performance in Taylor, Michigan. I think Dan felt a little need of competition earlier this afternoon. He uh, decided to try and race me whether he could put a stool together faster or I could put the control arms on the Camaro. I think it's pretty cool uh, to see how the car came together. Real Deal Steel did a great job putting together the parts from AMD. The fit and finish of just the production parts that are on the car, just in the state they are right now, is pretty cool. It's a mock-up. Okay. So we have, we have to mock the car to make sure everything will work before we weld it. So we're going to blow it all apart. Now it's going to blow apart. You're here. Welding's going to begin. Oh, that always works out well when I'm the welder. You're the yeah, welder. I think I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what we're trying to do at the AMD installation is we're rebuilding the car body. And in order to do that, we obey the original engineering on the car and we duplicate the spot welds that the factory put in the car. Following the factory lead on another Chop Cut Rebuild. This is Chop Cut Rebuild. Real cars. Real techs. Real deadlines. Hosted by Dan Woods. Chop, cut, rebuild. Some cars have a unique look and some have an acquired taste, but few have a unique look applied to an already tasty package. Mopar wing cars certainly achieved the goal. In 1969, NASCAR's rules for competition required manufacturers to produce over 500 vehicles in order to get on the track. Dodge came out with the Daytona and produced 503 or 505, depending on who you talk to. They changed the rules on them because the car was so dominant. So the rule now became, in 1970, that you had to produce one car for every dealership that you have. So, over 1,900 Superbirds came along. They changed the rules, but they didn't change who was in the winner's circle. Morning, guys. How are hey, you? Hey, Dan. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Hey, Ted. Hey, Dan. How are you? Good. Wesley, so uh, are we all ready to take on day two of the three-day strategy? Yeah, but day two is going to happen a little bit quicker because I don't want to fall behind, so I'm going to get everybody involved in the build. My name is Craig Hopkins, and I own the AMD Installation Center. Okay. All right. Well, with all this and Ted here to help, we'll go fast, right? Uh, I'm out of here. i got cars to take apart. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hey, good to see you thank, again. Yeah. Craig? Fun. Make sure when you come back, you bring a nose. Will do. Take okay. care of my baby. I will. All right. Well, let's get the tools and stuff. Let's get the guys. Today, just to get a little heads up on the car, because we have to finish this car. We only have a little bit more to do. We employed uh, most of the crew. I'm Wesley Kennedy, and I work here at uh, AMD Installation Center in Cleveland, Georgia. Today, we're just going to clamp up the car and use the spot welder mainly. There wasn't a whole lot for Dan to do, so we let him control the clamps. He brought them in and took them out for us. In the industry, the media industry, they have best boys, grips, etc. Today, we had clamp boy. You almost have to have a PhD to be clamp boy. I mean, because there's two carts and multiple clamps. It could get confusing. He took the job very seriously, <laughs> maybe too far. At one point, I noticed that he was actually counting the clamps and lining them up in line to make sure they were all there. Well, that's because any job worth doing is worth doing well. Or not. Today, Craig brought in Cesar to help me weld, which is kind of nice, because I've been on the back of the car all day trying to get everything lined up, and Cesar came in and welded the front. So the first thing you notice when Cesar and Wesley began welding the car as they double team the big welder because it's heavy, maybe in the 45, 50 pound range. And it just works better to have two people do it. After they got it where they could change the head and Cesar could run it by himself, Wesley took over on the MIG welding. Cesar's been with us for about 10 years. He came to us right out of high school. 
and he took to it like a duck to water. And now he's at the skill set where we can throw anything at him and he can build it. You notice that he did it in a sequence, in a pattern. What it does is allow us to make sure we're putting the proper amounts of welds in the right areas of the car. Yes, Cesar has an uncanny level of skill and control with the spot welder. The sheet metal on the front of the car is pretty important. We have to center up all the, the shock towers and all have to be centered of the car so when the suspension comes up onto the car, it's centered with, with the car in the frame. On the front of the car where our MIG weld is down low, the lower core support, it comes to the frame rail in there and there's no way to get our spot welder in there. It's, it's boxed in so we can't pinch it. So there's some places we do have to MIG weld. And our three day to plan to finish this car up is a, it's pushing it just a little bit. We're gonna have the front end all welded today and the back end's almost all locked into place. I'm really looking forward to day three simply because we're gonna cap the car, which means the roof's gonna go on. Now it'll be a charger when we finish, but then when Ted comes back for the next trip, it's gonna make the transition into Daytona. Clamps, who needs clamps? Clamps, get your clamps here. Who needs clamps? First thing on day three, we're getting rid of clamp boy. Hey, Wesley. Yeah, Dan? Clamp 42 is missing. Oh, I thought I turned that in. You signed it out, but I don't see your signature here that it came back. Mm -hmm. You know, look, I don't make the rules. I'm just following them like everybody should do, oh. you know? Mm -hmm. Go look in your toolbox and see if it's there. Yeah. Man, he's taking it Hey, the rules are for everyone. They're right here. Everyone can see them. This portion of Chop Cut Rebuild is presented by WyoTech. Make your passion your career. Turn pro at WyoTech. Building a show vehicle with a deadline is a little like a military movement. You've got to divide and conquer. If you divide your troops up, you will conquer the objective. Morning, guys. Morning, Dan. How are you? Doing all right. Good. How you doing? My name is Cody Horner, and I'm from Shippensburg, PA. So uh, where's Mikey? Mikey was doing a lot of this, right? Yeah, Mikey had to leave early this morning, okay. so I'm going to fill in for him. And you're Coming off the bench, you're the pinch hitter? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> OK. My name is Tyler Shepard. I'm an upholsterer, and I'm out of Nelson County, Virginia. What do we got? We've got brand new factory replacement covers from Catskin. So we'll be replacing the vinyl and cloth from Ford into brand new leather, French seamed custom seats from Catskin. We're gonna go ahead, this one's already stripped down, so I'm gonna have Cody start stripping that one, and okay. I'll start recovering this one. All right, I'll have him? Yep. Okay. I graduated from WyoTech about two years ago. Before WyoTech, I was active duty, uh, United States Marines. First comes off is the handle. Use your door panel tool right here. You're gonna have two T25 screws in the back hidden right here. Okay. Those are Ford's famous hidden screws. Dan and I had a running joke this morning about how Fords are harder to take apart because they hide the screws, but to me, it gives it much more of a clean appearance. Oh, okay, so we just keep going yep, up just until keep we keep going, hitting Keep going, and keep in mind that you've got your airbag right about here. Okay. So once you get to that point, you'll have to, to flip it up, do the two hog rings in the back, and you're good to go on the front. Okay. And Airbags can't go off right now, right? No, as long as the yellow cords are unplugged, you're good. The yellow cord, OK. Snip the blue wire and unplug the yellow cord. OK, that's, a, that's actually a really nice cover on there, but it's, uh, it just doesn't quite have that flare yet. Right? Nope. They're, uh, that's a they're awesome seat. for work vehicles. Yeah. They're really durable. They're easy to clean, mm -hmm. but they're not seen though. Sure. Yeah, it's more the taxi that gets you to see them. Absolutely. <laughs> when you're taking these covers off, you have to be careful of not trying to pull the hog rings too hard. You can pull the rods out of the foam. Hog rings are a C-shaped piece of metal. Uh, we clamp them from the hog ring tab that's sewn onto the cover, and then you have a metal bar that runs in the foam. You hog ring those together, it pinches the piece of metal shut, and it creates an awesome bond between the upholstery and the foam. 
The cat skin seat covers that we received, they're direct factory replacement. There's no gluing, there's no foam cutting, there's nothing involved except for the hog ring and Velcro. They fit every curve, they fit every bolster, they clip on, everything is direct factory replacement. So we should try and catch up with you now, right? Yeah, if you can. <laughs> how you doing, Dan? Good, how are you? Good, how's my guys doing? My name is Keith Miller. I'm a trim and upholstery instructor at Wyotech in Blairsville, PA. Just to back out it together here, huh? I pretty much showed them what to do. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, you got them on the right track. They're looking good. It didn't take Keith long to see we were going to need a little veteran upholstery help to keep pace with Tyler. It's also a good thing that my skills wouldn't be what influenced Cody. I'm more of a cautionary tale than a mentoring source to the young and impressionable around here. Dan came over today while I was working on the speaker pods for the back quarter panels of the van. Okay, so you got all the stuff that we're going to try and sell out of the back of the van later on, right? Well, as much as I'd like to, I think we're just going to try to install it in the van. All this we're going all to install? All of this is going into the van. And where's this going? Uh, this is kind of a mock-up of the quarter panels in the back. We're going to, this is kind of a rough template here. With the amount of stereo system we're putting in that car, it's, it's going to be very loud. Uh, you'll not only hear the music, but you'll feel the music. Yeah, these cat skin covers are amazing. And the fact that I didn't have to do much work on it means that I kind of foamed it in. This portion of Chop Cut Rebuild is brought to you by AMD, Auto Metal Direct. The name says it all. Oh, thanks, babe. Come. We'll use those a little later. Okay. I don't think the cold weather is going to kick in for a couple more hours yet. Hey, Dan, how are you? <laughs> Good. Hi, Dan. Hi, Angie. So what are we doing? Uh, going through some of the other parts we have, taillights, uh, bezels, mm -hmm. side markers. Figured you might as well get them out, get them open, get them on the car. Absolutely, I'll give you a hand. All right. My name's Jim Beebe. I own Red Rock Off-Road Performance here in Taylor, Michigan. So we want to try and get what kind of stuff on today? We want, like, the door handles, the tail lights, obviously. Yeah, I figure we have a handful of the, the trinket stuff, and okay. we can get through that stuff. OK. Uh, I mean, normally, we'd be putting this stuff on on, like, the last day, right? Yeah, usually that's finished work, <laughs> but... Uh, but this is going to keep us busy. Yeah, right now it's busy work. Don't waste any hours you have available. Correct. OK. It's been 20 years since I've laid a piece of glass in a car, so I figure it's probably best for me to give the guys at White's Auto Glass a call. How we doing, Dan? Good. We're here at work, man. Good. Well, we got glass for you. Uh, AMD makes front, rear, side, all that for this car. We only need to do the, what, the front and rear, right? Front and rear glass, yeah. And molding. Uh, we got the OER molding here okay. and all that. My name's John Zirazua. I work at White's Auto Glass. When we first got to the windshield, I noticed that we had to first put the clips on. Clips have to go on first. After that, we prep and we prime the pinch well. Jeff Jackson, I work at White's Auto Glass and Trim in Taylor, Michigan. The windshield is a laminated piece, which means it will crack, stay in one piece. The back window is a tempered. It'll break into a million little pieces. Safety glass is called. You did the top first and then the bottom? Mm-hmm. Come to me a little bit. Right there. You have to avoid those clips, right? Right. That's the whole reason we put the clips in first. There's no way we can set this glass. And then you're going to want to compress the windshield to get a good seal. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, see how it formed? Uh, a, yep, right there, all the way across. That's Beautiful. You, and that's how you know you got a seal on it. OK. That, that's, a, that's a nice, tight fit right there. Right. That's factory seal. Nice. Yep. Nice factory seal for a car that was never built in a factory. Now, Dan helped with the back window. And I was a little uh, worried about it because you only get one shot at it. But he handled it like a champ. I was very impressed. Messing this glass up is very easy. If you set it, you get one chance to set it in the vehicle. And then it's sealed. So you kind of want to get it exact. Next step is our chrome trim from OER. They don't hold the glass down, but they do add to the beauty. Mixing parts from different suppliers is when you smile and reward yourself for buying quality parts that fit right the first time. When I looked at the front windshield, the only issues that I seen were there, the screws weren't drilled yet for the cowl screen. So I knew we were gonna have to do that. At first, we started using self-tapping screws, and after probably breaking 
four or five of them, we knew that was useless. Let's give her a try. This one's going in. Jim broke out his drill bits, which he's going to have to go to the store and get some more, because we went through a lot of them. We are definitely going to have to increase our drill bit budget. I didn't know it was going to be that thick of metal, but we did get them in. Thick metal as an obstacle is a problem you actually want to have. Once the glass was installed, it was time to move on to the door handles, latches, and the rear end of the car. I figure it's a good chance to give Evan and James something new to do. Pretty sure neither one of them ever put a set of door latches in a 1969 Camaro. My name is Evan Bohinski, work at Red Rock Off-Road and Linux in Taylor, Michigan. I've never done door handles on a 69 Camaro before. The difference between the new hand door handles and these ones, the new door handles have all electronic motors in them. There's no fancy levers like on this one. When dealing with trunk latches, it's always a real pain to get them lined up correctly. So I figured it's just easier if we tossed Evan in the trunk and had him do it from the inside. Somehow I think Jim enjoyed doing this to Evan, whether it made the job easier or not. Today we dealt with pretty much everything from classic industries, from the door latches to the door handles to the trunk latch. And I was really impressed on how well everything went together. Now I wouldn't normally jump right into putting tail lights and bumpers on a car. However, we're still waiting for some other pieces to show up and we still have a time deadline. So we need to get the stuff on the car that we have while we have it. So we've got glass, we've got trim, we've got door handles, we've got a steering wheel, we've got tail lights, we've got a bumper, but this is Michigan in winter, so I guarantee you it will not be heat or delete. You're watching Chop Cut Rebuild. Hey, John. Good morning. Hey, Dan. How are you? Good. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you since uh, the high desert or SEMA. I'm John Hurd. I'm the industry relations specialist for WyoTech. Uh, Greg gave me this. This is my souvenir rendering. Oh, good. But from what I understand, we're not going to do this space anymore yeah. on that side or that space on that side of the rainbow anymore. You're, you're, you're right. Yeah. And, and we're not even doing that dam. That is the connect. Oh, this this was the little one. This is the little <laughs> one. We're, we're doing the transit. OK. So I want to introduce you to these okay. guys. OK. Hey, Rich. Hey. How are you doing? How are you doing, John? Good, good. Hey, I want to introduce you to Dan Woods. Dan? Chop Cut Rubin. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name is Rich Smirker. I'm a instructor at the Street Rod Department in Custom Fabrication here at Wyotech. Tony, a couple of former grads. We have a great relationship with our grads here. Uh, the reason is we stay in touch with them. So you didn't say, I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> <laughs> I can help out any way you like, including getting out of your way if you want. <laughs> I think you should put, put you to work. Put, or you can put me to work. A roll of tape, OK. <laughs> hard work. My name is Dalton Stroll, and I'm from the Eastern Shore of Maryland. The biggest challenge when it comes to trying to replicate these stripes is making them look straight to the eye with all the contours that come on the panels on these new vehicles. Trying to get the spacing and everything on both sides with the stripes was a little bit difficult. It's, it's a lot of measuring, but it's also a lot of eyeballing to make it look the same on each side. Well, Dan, what do you think? Hey, Paul. My name's Paul Dominic, and I'm the electives coordinator at the Wyotech Polarisville campus. This is uh, looking terrific. It's looking very good. What's weird is the, pan, the you know the door is not flat. Right. It was, I guess, on the Econolines. It was back in the day. And it creates this optical illusion that gives you this wonky shape. But if you look from the top, you can see that the, the line's right. Right, right. But what's wrong with that shape? I have no problem with that shape okay. at all. But and, and that shape was associated with these vans back in the 70s a lot. On the inside? Uh, not on yeah, the outside. Well, some, you know, the artwork. You're, yeah, the artwork. I think we're ready to, to bag it and put it in the booth, right? Ready to go. So, Sounds good? Good. When a SEMA project comes up, it's offered to both students and grads. Making it available to grads adds to their experience and our project quality. It may be good when you get out into the field, but getting time in on a Vegas-bound project isn't something that comes along every day. Once we got the van taped and papered and all figured out, and we knew he had to do a little bit more paper, and once that became 
possible, and Dan drove it into the booth for us. Here's Danny. We had to kind of wiggle it around a little bit and move things around, but we got it in there. I think Dan might have been just a little nervous driving the van with all the windows covered up and not being able to see anything and just going by finger pointing guidance. Needing bodywork after a collision in the body shop could be embarrassing. It was tight, but some rear end alignment solved concerns quickly, letting the paint crew get to work immediately. The color determination that we made, I took off of the original shagging and wagons that Ford built in 1978, and I matched those colors up, and we decided to put an extra orange in there because we had a larger width to cover on the side of that van. My name is Tony Garula. I'm originally from Central City, Pennsylvania. Uh, this project, it kind of gives the industry and people in the industry and the customization world what kind of work you can actually do with the newer model vehicles. It encompasses the late 70s in the modern day era of the industry. If we waited 15 minutes or so, then we could cover that color up with a six inch piece of paper and continue on to the next color. Even though that color got onto the following part down below, it didn't matter. The sequence of colors were darker as we went down, so they would cover over one another. We had actually ran into a small problem the paint on the orange wasn't actually dry when we put the paper down, and it ended up sticking to the paint. We were able to go ahead and scuff those out, take an airbrush, dust them in. There was a couple spots where the tape had lifted up on an edge, and that's pretty common on a humid, hot day. So our next step is going to be tape off the roof line and lower the black a little bit to give it a little more squashed look. Then we'll wipe it all down. We'll remask the entire vehicle again. And then we're going to clear coat. Now it's shagadelic, baby. Yeah. On the next Chop Cut Rebuild. The object for the shoot this time was a three day plan on the car. Morning, guys. Man, that was not good. Morning, Dan. How you doing? Good. And really revolved around getting the back end of the car up and then doing the front end, terminating with the roof. We do the back, we do the front, and now we do the middle. Getting to the bottom of things by putting the top on is the game plan for the AMD Daytona build. Once I had the rockers and posts all welded up, then it was time to prep the roof area. Dan and I got Cesar and Craig to come help us get the roof set up into position. Will this mean the return of Clamp Boy? When you're positioning a roof, it's pretty common to clamp it down, let it loose, move it a hair, clamp it down again. It's just part of the process. My name is Jack Ambries, and I'm R&D over at Gibson Performance. So is that the factory system? Yes, sir, that's the factory system right there. OK, so that's out and gone? Yep. Torn apart. Originally, we were going to go from the head pipe forward, but what I noticed was that the flange was a little bit smaller, so I made the decision that it was probably best to just reuse the head pipe from the exhaust. After reusing that stock head pipe, what we did was like we mocked up the Gibson muffler and held it up there to make sure everything else fit. Past exhaust meets future emissions on the next Chop Cut Rebuild.